Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your co host, Juliette Clark, and today we have some guests from the publishing world that you guys are going to be really excited to hear from. But before we get started with them, I want to remind you to go over to the Promote Profit Publish quiz and find out how well your platform is set up for a successful launch, whether you're speaking, whether you have a book or just a product, program, or service that you want to get out there to the world. You can find that at www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. So today's guest, you'll see we have two guests today. This is a rare show. I hope, we, I hope we'll just talk all over each other while we're here because I've never had this many before. Um, our first guest is Becky Norwood, who is the CEO of Spotlight on Your Business, Spotlight Publishing. She is a number one international best-selling author, speaker, and book publishing expert. Her main area of focus has been teaching and working with entrepreneurs and small business owners to establish their knowledge and expertise and find ways to stand out in this really busy, noisy world we have out there in powerful ways. Spotlight Publishing was developed in conjunction with her main business as she studied what is working and not working to grow a business. Becky now expertly guides her clients to become authors and understanding the big picture behind authoring books by implementing tools, tips, and resources that make publishing worth the time and effort. Her team has successfully brought over 200 authors to number one bestseller due to a unique system and powerful affiliate connections. So welcome, Thank you. Becky. Um, Natalie is the director of marketing for the same company, Marketing and Sales. And Natalie has a background in finance, sales, marketing, and is trained with mindset development leaders over the past 15 years. Natalie supports authors to envision and create a path through a bigger brand and business model, guiding them to recognize how they can showcase their expertise and knowledge by publishing a book, becoming a best-selling author, and using that book as their calling card to grow impactful influence. She is responsible for planning, development, and coaching authors to implement the right combination of marketing strategies and tools that will keep their book selling long after it's published. That's a huge problem for most authors. She also has passion to work with nonprofits to help them touch the world with their message message. Spotlight Publishing shows nonprofits a way they can implement book publishing to create a consistent revenue stream. So welcome, ladies. It's nice Thank to have you, you here. Thank, Thank you for having us. us. So um, let's talk about that for a minute. Why, why is it so hard for authors once they launch that book to keep that ongoing revenue going? You know, the biggest problem is, is that there are tremendous amount of books being published now. Now that we're in the self-publishing realm, it's everything's easy at their disposal to, at a person's disposal to even do it themselves, although I don't recommend it. Um, but there's many, many books being published every day. And if you don't do the marketing, what happens? I like to call it gets lost in the cobwebs of cyberspace because it does. It, it if you're not going to market it, nobody's going to see it because there's just too many books being published right now. There um, are. And, and the marketing brings up a really good point that is so hard to get people to understand. I'm sure you guys face this too, is that that marketing can't begin when your book is finished. It has to start a good year to 18 months out building that audience. You guys want to speak to that a little bit? Sure. So one thing I want to say is what we see so many people come to us and say, oh, I, I did this program and they told me to publish a book in a weekend. And so I did it <laughs> and they have no sales. And, and you're exactly right with the marketing. The key marketing starts the minute that you put pen to paper. You should have a marketing plan and know what marketing tools feels good for you to implement. And it should be incorporated in the book. Every chapter, you should know the goals of that chapter, how you're going to touch people, how you're going to relate to your readers. So there's so many things that should be implemented and talked about even before you start writing. Or if you have already started writing, let's review what you've written and make that plan combined with your writing. Yes, yes, that is so good. So the reason that, that I got together with these guys is because we, we have the quiz to qualify, which helps people with their business and, and their books. But you guys actually have so many other tools that we, we don't really work with. So I, I wanted to bring that up because um, 
we are at the front end as well. What these guys are talking about, it's not just me being out there saying you need to have that present. I mean, we are all authors on here talking right now, and we know that presence has to be there. So you have to have that 12 to 18 month plan before you even go into it. Um, so what's the importance for you? What do you guys think the importance of incorporating storyteller telling into your book and marketing does for you? Storytelling, I believe, is the key to the real success of any book, because anybody can put facts and figures and expound upon all the whys of wherefores of whatever they're promoting or whatever their passion is. But without the storytelling, you don't, you don't grab the, the hearts of the listener and you don't form the connections. And, and so storytelling woven into every bit of not just your book, but in your, into your marketing has to be really well thought out because you can bring to life your own life experience. You can bring to life experiences that you've had working perhaps with a client, something, something that's um, happening in, in the, in our world right now, you can bring all of that and weave story into where your passion is and what you're, what you're teaching or what you're, you're speaking about. Once you do that, that I feel like the art of storytelling is is getting lost with the advent of cell phones and all these modern conveniences that we use that keep us glued to our screens. Um, you see entire families around the table. That's all they're doing. They're not talking to each other. And um, cultures have, have grown either united or, or apart with either because of storytelling, they're united because it teaches the younger generations going forward. And without the storytelling, even complete cultures of people are falling away from each other. So we feel that storytelling is part of the parcel of the strength of any society. And when you put it, place it in your book or in your, in your, in your marketing, it's the core of where there's the strength to help them to become relate, to relate to what you're saying. Yeah. Storytelling, we all, I pick up a book, if it's all facts and figures, I'm not reading it. Right. No, it's, it's boring. It's very boring. Yeah. And I think you're right about losing the art of storytelling. One of our, um, one of our clients, Dan Clark, uh, you know, he's in the speaker hall of fame. And if you listen to one of his talks, that's all it is, is the ability to take you up and down with that emotional journey yeah. that, um, and it's not just one story. It's a series of stories that he's put together and your book really does. And your marketing has to be like that. Um, I see a lot of this out in the world where the story is not really a story. It's like a, a braggadocious, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah, there's a big difference. That's not yeah. a story. <laughs> so speak to that difference. I mean, there are so many that it's like a, a bragging story. It's a self-promoting story, but that's not really what we're talking about here. Mm -mm. Yeah. You want to market yourself and share some of your accomplishments. But I think what Becky is talking about incorporating stories, well, most authors, especially new authors, are fearful and uh, hesitant to get that story out because, you know, you're putting it out to the world. You could, there could be judgment. And often what we kind of say to them is, you know, if you don't share your story, your wisdom and your legacy with the people that you care about, it's going to be lost. And, and that's, there's a saying that says the graveyard is one of the richest places with all the stories that were never written, all the songs that were never sung, all the story, you know, your, your legacy will go with you if you don't share it. And we just recently, my grandmother turned 100 years old and she had eight children, seven are still living. And we got each one of them to write a chapter and then we interviewed my grandma and put those words as the beginning of the book, kind of her legacy. And then the children each wrote a chapter and then the grandchildren. And when we put that together and then we incorporated, and this book is just a legacy book. It's not one that we're sell, driving to sell, but when we put it all together and then when you saw how it touched, like my two daughters are in their twenties, 
for them to read the stories of my grandma her biggest wedding gift was five dollars and with that she bought pots and pans and linens and bedding and silverware you know and we were <laughs> to see them experience and um get to know those facts that they would have never known mm -hmm. um it's just not a conversation that you bring up uh, every day with your grandmother. So th the things that can be lost and the lessons that can be shared and passed on traditions, it's, it's sad that it is a lost art. Yeah, it, it really and truly is, especially because the generation we were raised in, it was, it was everything. We, you know, we knew these, these silly things about our grandparents and our parents. And I remember cleaning out my, um, my mother's house when she passed away. And there is this huge family tree there. Like, right. you know, nobody, I, I think people do them on ancestry, but not like the grandmothers used to do inside their Bible right, right. with, you know, stories about everyone. So I think that's changed. Uh, that's changed a lot. You so, know, I read, um, a book recently in I had listened to this gentleman speak and he kept talking about his book and he was speaking a lot from stage and he te teaches mindset and different things when I read his book I got through the first chapter and I was so disgusted with it because it was just like it felt like it was a brag fest mm -hmm. you know it was got to do this got to buy my course got to buy this got to buy that oh, you know wow. and i was <laughs> i was so surprised at that and that's what we're talking about we don't you don't take a book and use it yes if you're carefully if you put it together carefully you can you can talk about some of the things that you teach and you you can even leave links for them to go and check it out or any of those number of things but it, the whole book is not a an at walking or a, a advertisement for something. Yeah, I, I've seen a lot of books like that too. I'm actually getting ready to release my next book, and my whole about me chapter is pretty much all my failures, like how I got to where I am today, and here's how I failed. And you know, and we certainly have a bunch of them. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. I think every entrepreneur does because you don't get to be a good entrepreneur unless you fail a lot, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> an yeah. awful lot. So yeah. um, what do you, what could authorship do for your career and your business? Do you want me to? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to talk to you. I think I took <laughs> the conversation to you. <laughs> sure. Well, there's so many different ways that um, you can edify yourself. If you know, when we talk to our authors up front, we try to gauge where do you, what do you want this book to do for you? What are the goals of this book? Do you want to be getting on stages and edifying yourself as that go-to expert? Or do you want them to truly understand how you work with your clients and maybe give some free resources and value to those people so they are open to seeing you as different than you know, the, all, all the other, say, real estate agents or investors. So there's, there's such a big marketplace. So the little things that you can do to make yourself stand out, um, there's, well, Becky, share, can we share some direct tools that? Oh, yeah. If you guys want to, you can, yeah. Yeah, so often you can tie in um, like a mobile custom app, you can do lessons and teaching and you can teach as a group, but then you can do custom videos that go one-on-one. -on -one. So if you're group teaching, but you want to drive a message to say one person, um, there's journaling, there's courses that you can offer, whether it's paid or free. And there's so many things that you can tie together in your book to show the value that you're gonna give if you're working together so the yeah the key is that that when you stop and look at the big picture and this is where we've had a lot of success with our authors is um, starting from that first time they meet with us and they want to publish a book is let's stop and figure out what the big why is behind this because mm -hmm. truly in my in my 
way of looking at it. It's not, publishing a book is not really for the faint of heart. <laughs> That's what I mean by that is that there's a lot that goes into it, a lot of planning. There's the branding so that, that if you are using social media, you're blogging, you have a website, so that they each one kind of goes with the other so that people notice you just like Coca-Cola or Pampers or any major brand. We know where who they are and what they are just because of the brand without even being said anything else. We have to, as authors, it's imperative that we brand ourselves too. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of little pieces that, you know, once we start with the why, who is that one person they're talking about? And by that, I mean, it isn't just, well, I'm going to talk to middle-aged women that, that are um, becoming empty nesters and they they like to do crafts well that's that's just too that's too broad way too broad so come up with one person and who what does that person like to eat what do they like to do for recreation what do they want what kind of work do they do the reason we do that is when you can hone in that just like narrow in on that one person it's just like when you decide to buy a car now maybe you get introduced to this wonderful prius that that you're just really if you hadn't noticed it ever before, but something about it just really struck your attention when it was shown on the, and you decide to buy it when you were out car shopping. You drive off the lot and suddenly you see 20 Priuses that, that are on the road and you never saw them before. Mm -hmm. So that's what the idea is, is if you can figure out that one, then the many ones will come to it because you know exactly who you're talking to. And then how to stay connected with that person. It's not a one and done. Mm -hmm. It's that ongoing relationship with you that you build with those people. Yeah. And it I is feel like it's a, good. a lot of give, a lot of giving at the same time. It, it definitely is. And this is so good that you guys do this because one of the failures I see out in the coaching world a lot is someone goes to an event to grow their business and all of a sudden it's, oh, your products and services aren't selling because you need a book. Well, chances are, if you're not doing what these guys are telling you you need to do and actually building those relationships and connecting, chances are that book is going to be another failed product. Right. Because you have to figure out, you have to be talking to people and finding out why they aren't purchasing those other things and what they really do want in a book from you. That's why the, what you guys do is so key with everything. Yeah, and that's why we're not a big fan of the book over the weekend. Yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> well, unless, unless you're already branded and you're someone that has all your market your ducks in a row, <laughs> yeah, all your ducks in a row, then that, that may work for you. But if you're someone that has that vision, that idea, and you want to be speaking on stages all over the world, you can't write a book on the weekend and just it just happens. There's a lot, there's a lot of behind the scenes. There, there is, and there are a lot of, um, I'm going to talk, you guys talk about what's good, I'll talk about what's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Seminars where you can go for the weekend and your book is published like on Kindle and then everybody in the room buys it and you're a number one bestseller for about five minutes. Yep. And nobody ever looks at your book again. Exactly. I've attended those. I've, I've even been one that purchased them because when publishing first started to become a thing several number of years ago, that's what they were doing. And so I innocently thought that that's what, what you do. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I got started. And I was like, well, that's a big joke. Because at first I had my first few clients that I helped publish and we got them to number one bestseller. Everybody's happy. And then all of a sudden they're not happy because their books are not selling. Right. Well, what a, there, there's one of the lessons in business that you learn and in our publishing business, this is what we learn. You don't do that because your client is all of a sudden not real happy with you. Right. <laughs> and they're not happy with the results. Um, and I know there's many, many of those, many, many groups out there that teach you can do it in, in a, a weekend. You can do it in a month. You can do it in three months. You can do it in six months. I beg to differ because yeah. I think that maybe you can get it read it, but written and do a good job of it, it with all the editing, all the other stuff that goes with it. But 
What about the marketing infrastructure around it to make it successful? <clears throat> that is so, so very true. And um, here's another thing people don't know. So um, when you game the system like that, Amazon has, is on to you now. Yes. And they actually monitor how much of the book you read, if you've ordered it on Kindle, how fast you read it. Did you finish it? Um, so if you think you're going to just go in and buy it real quick and boost sales, they're on to you. They, they have a lot of tricks. And, and you, can, you can game Amazon's system really easily. I, I saw a guy a couple of years ago, it was international bestseller. And when I opened up the program as a publisher that we have to see how many copies he'd sold, he'd sold three copies. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that happen too. And yeah. <laughs> one the guru that I learned, um, I love the guy as far as his, it, the wisdom and what he came up with, because he's one of the first ones I ever heard about self-publishing. But it, but it's funny because there was nothing behind it as far as he, now he's a guru that has, probably a million followers already. So you can pull some of that stuff off pretty cool. And people will buy just because they're, you are that person. Mm -hmm. Most of us don't have that. Right. We're not that kind of person. So, so that means that we really have to do the back end work and we really have to plan and strategize and we really need to learn ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, as to, okay, do we like social media? Are we going to use social media? Are we do we love speaking and, and selling from the, or speaking from the platform and maybe even selling from the platform? Do we like to do retreats? Do we like doing the articles and blogs? Do we prefer to make, create courses? Is it a combination of it all? You know, in, you know, find out where your niche is. Is it, is it in person, um, you know, joining the chamber of commerce and in person, meeting with people. What is it that you like and build around that structure? Mm -hmm. And there may be key pieces that you don't want to do yourself, but are necessary. Like we've had some authors that say, I, I don't really want to be on social media. Well, you're losing a big audience. So hire someone that can brand your voice and help you be that consistent message on social media but then you need to engage with these people. So that's where we sit down and we really look for your strengths, what you're willing to do, what you don't want to do, and then put that marketing, the key marketing in. I think one of the successes of Spotlight Publishing is we don't try to do it all. We have an amazing marketing team that we have everything from if you want your own TV show, we can get you on the author um, uh, entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs. I, we just we're doing an authorpreneur summit, so that word's stuck in my <laughs> entrepreneurs TV channel. We can, uh, you know, brand you in a custom mobile app. We have people that will post for you your message. On social media we have blitz and blog tours if you're not on social media yet we have full um, social media makeovers um, there's so many tools that we can help you meet your goals and we, we give you the experts and there's also audio books there's you know there's a lot of there's a lot of variety because you can also tap into um, a completely different type of person, same, same interests and everything, but some people will never pick up a book, mm -hmm. but they'll listen to a book, that's, you know? Yeah. So, so there's, there's just a lot of pieces. So that's where we, we do have a really cool VIP day that we do with our authors. Um, not all of them take us up on it, but the ones that do, we really just, we spend the whole, either one full day or two half days where we just really dig, dig dive, dig dive, <laughs> dive, <Deep> dive. <laughs> and dive deeply into what their big picture is and their why and who they're targeting. That's very cool. So uh, for those of you out there thinking right now, well, they're a smaller company and you know, why wouldn't I go use an ex Libras or an author house? And I'm going to explain a little bit why the, the smaller companies in this arena are really terrific. Um, my experience with Author House was they tried to sell me a list. 
So we're going for $2,000, we'll promote you, promote your book release to our list of over a million people. Right. To the untrained eye, and I can see Becky kind of sitting there going, oh, I know where this is going. Mm -hmm. To the untrained eye, that looks really great. Oh my gosh, my book is going to be in front of a million people. What you just paid for was them showing their audience, their list subscribers that, look, we published another book and you paid for it. Mm -hmm. Nobody is going to buy your book. So you have to, when you go with these smaller companies, you're actually getting services that will help you get out into the world. And I think a lot of the big companies, um, they are extensions of the traditional publishing world and they have no interest at all in actually seeing you be successful as a self-publisher. It's, it's kind of really sad um, when you watch what happens with that because we have authors come to us, they have spent ungodly amounts of money. They never get a royalty. We don't keep royalties. We, we don't, don't believe either. in that. Nope, do not do that. Um, they oftentimes we have three that have lost the rights to their book because the company went out of business and they can't get access it access it anywhere mm -hmm. and they're heartbroken they just spent so much money and have nothing to show for and I, and yes they say they're going to promote it out and they're oh it's going to maybe even be a wonderful documentary and all these things oh be so careful with that because <laughs> I, I have such a story around that documentary. I had a client that came to me several years ago with a, a, her family was British royalty or war legacy, something like that. And her first book, I won't say which company it was with, but one of the larger companies, she had never received a royalty. While I was sitting there working with her on our next steps, they called her and they said, Oh my gosh, a Hollywood producer saw your book. He loved it. And for $20,000, we can make it into a movie script. And she was so excited. And I was like, wait, 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 hold on. How many people outside your family bought that book? She said 12. <laughs> I was like, what do, you, what, what do you really think the odds are that one of those 12 was a Hollywood producer? And I was really disturbed because this was a little old lady. She was in her 80s. So, I mean, to me, that's just elder abuse. <laughs> it is. I, I have a really dear friend. She's about 86 now. And when she first published, and I think her book was seven, or 80s, the new, 70s, the new 40 or something like <laughs> that. Um, really, really good book. She's a brilliant, brilliant woman. Now she's in her maybe 85 Sorry, my butt bird's in the background making that noise. <laughs> She's, and she has no access to her book. She had to buy a whole full, when she first made the contract, she had a garage full of books that she has sold every one of them. She had access to no more of those books. And she's just so distraught because that was what she thought she was going to continue. She's very active. She speaks everywhere. She's amazing in her mid, you know, late eighties and she's still active, but she no longer has your book available. Oh, that's so, see, even your bird is mad about it. I can hear him. <laughs> he doesn't even like this conversation. <laughs> well, I, I was going to ask you guys why marketing's the key, but I think we already covered that. Um, how can you guys set yourselves apart or I mean, uh, entrepreneurs in general with impactful influencers today? Cause it's a big noisy world out there. It's a hugely noisy world. Um, there's a lot of ways, uh, but it's, it's first understanding your target market. It's, it's aligning yourself with people that are already leaders in your target market. If, if nothing else, make sure you learn from them because they've kind of paved the way for us. There's nothing new under the sun, I always say. So there's somebody else that's out there doing that and many are leaders. So learn from them. And what that does is that as you learn from them and you start sharing what you are learning and you maybe even quote make quotes from them, people immediately in their minds will associate with you. Well, they must know what they're talking about too. And typically if you're learning from them, you begin to really understand thoroughly what you're doing. So that's part of the impact. The book, book is a good impact, but then there's so much deeper is, is make sure that you're providing something that is needed 
that is wanted, that is searched for, and find out what that is and hone into it. Don't try to be everything. Niche down. Niche down into the, um, really hone down onto that one area where you could shine, really, really shine. And absolutely, this is one of the biggest things we've had to learn in, with Spotlight Publishing. Don't try and be all things to all people. Right. It just doesn't work. Right. You know, besides driving yourself nuts. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's expensive. When you don't niche, you can't market to everyone. It's expensive and it's not targeted. Right. So, um, you know, it, it is really a lesson to learn. So what are the top marketing tools that an author can implement for driving sales and reviews? Wow. So we have a new tool. It's probably new the last six months. And what we're seeing is it's a tool that you hook up your book in Mobi, uh, PDF, all different forms, and you can give your book out. And it's an automation where it reminds people, hey, can you go in and do a review of my book? We have systems that when you put those in place, it's so easy to share because some people aren't great on the computer. We've had authors say, I've sent it to them and I don't know how to attach it or, you know, different things for their, their book. And so when we build in systems like this into their publishing package and it's set up for them, so it's so easy for them to share any copy out, whether you want it dropped in a Dropbox, whether you want it right to a Kindle or in your email, and then automation for saying, thank you so much. Will you do a review for me? And it directs them right to exactly where they do a review. We have also, I, I talked about the um, social media makeovers. Right along with that, we have really good success with our blitz and blog tours. And that's blasting you out to a whole bunch of bloggers all on one day so you're just all over the place your message is getting out and what a great way for you to tap into those um, bloggers and then say hey look where I was featured today oh my gosh check out what they you know featured me in this bloggers arena and so we have can we talk about our summit I was just going to ask you because we're getting ready to close out. Yes. Uh, give us the link. And then there's also a, it, I, I believe it's free. And then there's a VIP. So if yeah. you give us both of those. So um, Becky can get the link, but we have put together 33 market industry leaders in marketing. And this could be marketing your business or marketing your book. Um, these these people are just amazing with the tools and uh, marketing strategies that they're going to share. They, each of them are giving away a free gift. So it's very, it's free to um, listen to the summit and get, you'll get all their free gifts. But then if you upgrade to VIP, what we're doing is they are giving an extra special, whether it's a gift or an offer that is not out there anywhere. So it's only for the VIP people. On top of that, you'll get the recordings of all the speakers for the entire event. And Becky and I are doing a drawing for a $10,000 publishing package for one of our lucky VIP winners. So there is so much value and the upgrade to VIP is $97. It is. It's just, it's ridiculous that, and we're so grateful. Our speakers are so generous. When we were looking, we're like, oh my gosh, this is incredible value that they're giving for free. So we're so excited for people to hear it. Okay, Becky, what's the URL? And when's it's the a really time? long one, and I'm, I'm I, I, I know she gave me like shape shift <laughs> university, and I'm like, what is this? <laughs> I'm, I'm just wondering if I can get a bitly code because I'm going, ah, that's way long. And um, we had a glitch, so I had was waiting for them to make sure that it's out, but it's shapeshiftuniversity.com authorpreneurs book 
www.marketing-summit. So let me see if I can get a real quick bit.ly code. Oh, oh don't give us a bit.ly code. Let, okay. us, let us go there. So can you say it again yeah. slowly? Sure. I will be very happy to. It's shapeshiftuniversity.com forward slash entrepreneurs with an S um, dash book dash marketing dash summit. Awesome. So when they transcribe, that'll be in the show notes, you guys. <laughs> so go to it. You guys, thank you so much for sharing all of your wisdom today. I really appreciate it. And I um, hope you guys have a great summit. Absolutely. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Thank you for having us. We so appreciate you.